In today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a simple repair using Autodesk Fusion 360. So you can turn files that simply won't print into ones that will. So to start with, we're going to go into Autodesk Fusion 360. And the first step is to upload the SDEL file that you need to repair. We're going to do that by going into the data panel here, clicking the upload button, selecting the file, putting it in and clicking upload. When that's done, we'll be ready to work on the file. Now that's uploaded, we can open it up and you'll see we have this file here. we're going to want to go across to the mesh tab as part of Autodesk. Now, you might look at this file and think, uh, it doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that. But if you open up the bodies tab, you'll see that there's already uh, a warning sign and it shows that Fusion 360 has identified this mesh as having problems. You'd also see that if you try to print the file and although it looks okay, as a file when you actually click print what you get generated at the end just isn't what we're after and that's because this file has a range of errors where there'll be overlapping surfaces not completely closed surfaces and the slicer can't make heads or tail of what it's actually meant to be printing so when it comes to slicer layer it doesn't generate the correct layer that we're expecting to see here so, as I said, Fusion 360 has already identified that the mesh is not oriented and it does not have a positive volume. If you click the caution, it will bring up the repair function. You can also go here from the mesh tab, repair. Then select the body, make sure the body is selected. And we've got these different repair types and they range from the simplest repair that takes the quickest amount of time all the way up to a full rebuild, which takes the slowest amount of time. Close holes will simply attempt to fix the mesh in the simplest way possible. Close any holes and fix any triangles that are facing the wrong direction. You can use the preview here to check how that's looking. And when you do that, you'll also get an indication of whether the fix has worked. Just because it works still doesn't necessarily mean that the file is going to be correct. So let's click here, okay. And you can see where we've got this sort of flash. It's, uh, it's a good indication that there's actually two surfaces here uh, where there shouldn't be, there should only be one. Uh, so this is most likely still going to be causing problems. And you can see here where we should have a hole, we've actually still got a surface, so it's not generated how we want. And that's not uncommon when repairing files because there's just no way for the software to know what exactly this file should be when there's multiple surfaces at play. Okay, so that is the close holes function. We also have stitch and remove. That does the same as close holes, but also a few more fixing operations as well. We then have wrap, which will first perform the stitch and remove operation, but then attempt to create a new surface all the way around the outside of the mesh. It will remove any inner structures. And then finally, we have rebuild, which effectively deletes the entire existing surface and tries to create an entirely new one. Again, in the structures will be destroyed. We'll look at these operations in more detail in just a second. But for now, I'll show you how that operation probably won't have done the trick for the repair. So if we go over to the mesh here as we've only got one body in the design we could just export the whole design right click and save as mesh if you've got multiple bodies in a design you can go into bodies choose the body right click and save as mesh one thing to note for fusion 360 is that the stl upload is a little bit odd and files tend to be 10 times larger than they actually are so when you come to export the file save as mesh if you select the unit type as centimeter, you will end up with the correct scale when you come to your finished file. Let's bring in the close holes one, which is the one we've just done. 
orientate it in the same way like that and let's have a look how that's generated and you can see again we've ended up not with the correct output one thing that's definitely causing an issue is the fact of this extra surface that's ended up in the file here if you look from this side you can see it's meant to be a hole all the way through but on this side you can see that there's an additional surface causing problems that is going to get in the way of the repair because the software will think this surface is meant to be closed and that could end up resulting in this surface being closed off fully as well and you can see here again that double surface if I undo the repair for now and we're back how we were at the start we can again attempt to perform a different repair type stitch and remove in some cases could do the trick and end up removing that extra surface but unfortunately again in this case you can see that all it's doing is filling this side in completely and filling this side in completely and that's because this particular file was in a pretty bad way if we look at the original file again just to help explain what's going on here there is actually many surfaces that are making up this unit it isn't one single closed mesh one single solid volume which the slicer can chop up to make that even more obvious what we can do in simplified 3d is use the mesh function to separate the connected surfaces when we do that you can see all of these individual items here are different surfaces that are making up this overall body because of all these different surfaces when you come to perform the mesh repair fusion 360 still can't work out what's going on you see in this one here for closed holes if we were to do a mesh repair separate connected surfaces we've still ended up with a load of different surfaces about 30 to be precise the stitch and remove you'd expect that to be a little bit better we've ended up with seven but again we still shouldn't have that many different surfaces it should just be one so let's go back over to fusion 360 again and take it back to how the mesh was at the beginning the other functions we have for repair are wrap so you can see here if we perform a wrap the mesh is again completely closed but as it warns inner surfaces are removed which means that this channel we're supposed to have through here has been closed off because it thinks that that's an inner structure the rest of the mesh looks fine import that into the slicer try to separate the mesh we would see we only have one surface still so that will finally print it's finally a single solid mesh that the slicer can interpret mostly in the correct way but obviously, as I mentioned, this piece is meant to have a channel that goes all the way through, two cylinders that cut all the way through. The final thing we can try, if I undo this again, go back Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo, is the rebuild. Now with the rebuild, inner structures are again removed, but because this is just a single surface, this isn't technically an inner structure. So if we do a rebuild, it's possible it might work. If we click on the preview we can see that the file looks generally pretty good now the way this repair works is the whole surface becomes approximated with voxels you can see these little squares there that are then turned into triangles now a voxel is a 3d pixel so effectively we just have the shape approximated by these little 3d pixels and that's why we haven't got a really clean surface around the circles it's a bit blocky you can increase the density to make that a, an even cleaner build so if i update that now and you can see with the density higher we've now ended up with a much better approximation of the file so if i click ok we wait for it to load and it generates this mesh one thing to note with this function is it will have dramatically increased the file size because it's used quite a lot more triangles. But sometimes that might be a necessary evil to work with to get the file that you require. It has also introduced a few little artifacts 
like here and at the edges where we have lost that little bit of resolution but again sometimes that's just the devil you're going to need to work with if we save this as a mesh and preview it you'll see we finally got something that we should get and by the time the resolution of printing is considered these artifacts that were introduced by the rebuild process aren't actually visible in the print itself because of the resolutions of FDM 3D printing. So that's that. So that's how we'd repair it if we were only using Fusion alone. You can see what I was saying though about the dramatic increase in file size. We've gone up two orders of magnitude higher for what is a really simple file. So that's a bit crazy. Of course you could reduce it, but again, that's only going to further worsen those imperfections that have been introduced by that process. Another way you could have fixed this file, and it does involve multiple steps, is to mm, do a little bit of manual processing first. So you see in this file here where we've got this extra surface that shouldn't be there. If we were to go mesh, separate connected surfaces, and I'm doing this in Simplify 3D, which is a paid software, you could also do this in Mesh Mixer. Just separate the surfaces and select this surface here, which is the one that shouldn't be there, and remove it. That will make it much easier for the repair software to know what we actually want. Select all the surfaces and then File, Export Model, Call this one face correction. Upload that model again to Fusion 360. Open that up. See, we still have the errors. So we click that little caution function. Change the repair type to wrap. Click OK. Now have one single solid body. So we save that as mesh. Now, if we import that, you'll see that it's performed the wrap. But because we removed that surface, we gave it that little bit of extra information to know that that was meant to remain as a cavity. It didn't think it was an internal structure. And so it's been able to keep that there. So when we click prepare to print, the slicer knows what is meant to be there and what isn't meant to be there. And we would again get a perfectly usable and correct print from this model. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learnt a thing or two about fire repairs. Fire repairs can be quite complex and the best way to prevent fire repairs is to design properly in your chosen software and each software normally has a guide on how to design proper watertight models. However, sometimes this can't be avoided and sometimes people don't have the original design file and need you to work with files that have errors in them. When that comes into place, the only thing you can do is repair those files and this is one of the methods and processes I take to repair them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more content in the future. If you'd like more videos of this style, then let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions, again, you know where to go and I will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.